spoke uh, particularly to do with the burning of bondholders, the treatment of uh, senior debt, uh, that this option was extremely risky for Ireland, in your own words. Uh, you also spoke of the terribly agitated sea in which Ireland was but one boat. Um, <coughs> against this background, presumably with the euro tying all the boats together, did you tell Brian Lenehan, either in personal phone calls, at ECOFIN meetings, or in any other way, not to burn bondholders? My relationship with Brian are written and clear enough. The uh, burning of any kind of uh, such a senior bond was, as I said already, in the time of Brian, considered by consensus as an extraordinary bad move. So at no time is it fair to say yes or no that Mr. Lenehan exercised the preference to burn bondholders. You mean he, uh, envisaged to do that? Did exercise. Mr. Lenehan ever express the view that the Irish government intended and wished to burn the bondholders. Again, I have the very clear memory of what happened afterwards with uh, the new minister. And uh, I have been already uh, very, uh, I would say, clear on that. With Brian, it seems to me that there was an overwhelming sentiment that it would be a very bad idea. And I have no memory of Brian envisaging to do that. You have no memory of him saying that they would like, that the Irish government would like to burn bondholders. Is that the case? I have the memory of his successor saying that, not him. But not, but not him. I have okay. no memory of him. Can I ask, um, it is a matter of fact, is it a matter of fact or not, that the decision not to burn bondholders uh, was one that cost, had a fiscal cost on the Irish people of four billion. Would you agree or not with that statement? Certainly not. I think that uh, had this decision taken, the cost for Ireland would have been considerably higher because it would have destroyed the creditworthiness of Ireland. Um, this is an opinion, of course. That by, was... by, by the way, at the time, do you know another country which embarked in such a move? Sorry, can you repeat that? By the time, by, by the way, do you know at the same time another country doing that in the rest of the world, in the rest of Europe or the rest of the world at that time? Well, it's a question what I ask. Like you're considering all 15 boats, I am interested only in the, 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 the buoyancy of one, yeah. as you will appreciate. There, are, there, ask, is, there are the 15 boats that? and all the other boats that are not in the euro area and are in the rest of the world in the advanced economy. But it's important for you to have an idea of what's going on you, you everywhere. Mentioned, you, you mentioned that, uh, you mentioned that uh, in your statement that you provided advice only in the context of the issue of senior boats. Can I ask, uh, did that advice manifest itself at any time in the form of letters as the advice provided in that of November 19th? No, I don't think there has been any letter. So there is no correspondence between the ECB and the Irish government in the context of burning bondholders? Not to my knowledge. In 2010? Not, not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. What do you think? But again, <laughs> the, the position are very clear, so uh, I don't see exactly what is the you know, problem. Yeah. I, made, I made candidly an, our own analysis, uh, the analysis of the Governing Council of the ECB. Were there, it's very clear. Con were there telephone contacts providing advice similar in tone to that provided in the letter of November? 2000 and uh, November 19th. I mean, when we have a position of the Governing Council, I don't hide it. So it's pretty possible that uh, not by telephone. Brian, I was, I was seeing Brian in any case, every month, 
and perhaps even more frequently because we had more, uh, more discussion in the Eurogroup, everywhere, uh, in other meetings. So uh, discussion of Brian have been very numerous and uh, very, as I already said, confident and friendly in circumstances that were totally dramatic for all reasons, uh, yeah. for him and for me, and, and he had two reasons to be in a very dramatic situation himself. Yeah. I understand. Um, can you say with absolute certainty that Brian Lenehan or the Irish government never sought to burn the bondholders? Did I say that? Myself? No, I'm asking you. I'm yeah. asking you, can you say with absolute certainty that the Irish government of the day, where Brian Lenehan was the Minister for Finance, did not seek to burn the bondholders? This is what you implied because you said you remembered Minister Noonan, the next minister, yeah, yeah, yeah. seeking to do it. Yeah, I mean, you had Brian, can, say, uh, Brian was a friend. Brian was a friend with whom I had, uh, you know, uh, discussion on, you know, uh, a hundred of other issues than that one. I cannot, and I cannot be the, the uh, I would say, the, uh, I cannot have the knowledge of all what he thought at any moment in time. So it's... Uh, so it is possible uh, and, in your view and, or and, impossible? Uh, we should, uh, I mean, we cannot ask him the question. We cannot ask him, but is it possible or impossible that, that there was a... Was there ever an ECOFIN meeting, for example, where Minister Lenehan or his officials stated Ireland would like to burn the bond? Again, I have the very clear memory of the uh, new minister uh, position, the debate uh, in, in Ireland for the first. Again, it, this is minuscule in comparison with the legal guarantee which was given by the very same government. Uh, in the again, and Brian has also the right to, to think something mm -hmm. and then to say, well, after all, it's not a good thing to do. I mean, it's uh, up to up to him. I'm almost there, thank you. Um, the, the, the ECB representatives at the Troika negotiations or the bailout negotiations, uh, is it possible that they overruled attempts or approaches by Brian Lenehan or his officials in seeking to burn the bondholders? The government of Ireland is responsible for all its decisions. Okay, of course. And is the, it, would that and, be a yes uh, or a no, Mr. Trichet? No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm because sorry, I don't it, respond by yes or no. I would tell you only that the government of Ireland takes the decision, full stop. The Troika is there because they have to present the case then either to the IMF or to the European Council or say to the, the Eurogroup. Yeah. The and, and the Eurogroup decides whether or not to help <clears throat> whether or not to lend. That's the way it operates. I appreciate that very, very finely. I want to move the final question. Well, other people have had 11 sure. minutes, Chairman, if you wouldn't mind. I'm at 8 then minutes, 30 seconds. Your time. So I'm just finishing up, if that would be OK. And we are well, timing it here. This is important. Would the officials negotiating for the ECB yes. have had a mandate to tell the Irish negotiators, you cannot burn bondholders? I have already told you, you are referring to 10 or 11? 10. 10. Overwhelming consensus, so certainly overwhelming consensus in the ECB. So no particular instruction, it went without saying. It was considered that it would be a very bad move. And I'm saying that for the 10th time. And uh, that being said, the government of Ireland could take any decision he wanted to take. And he could have said, no, finally, I don't want the loans coming from Europe, or I don't want the loans coming from the IMF, or I don't want uh, this and that. I mean, let's not forget. And until now, the government of Ireland took always full responsibility for what he's been doing. And that is why Ireland's signature is as good as it is. And you have other examples which are exactly the reverse, and you could see also the consequences on the quality of the signature.